Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. There's been a lot of talk about how the Chinese might land people on the moon for the first time before the United States land people on the moon for the seventh time. And if they are going to do so, this is the rocket that they plan to use. The Long March 10. The very long Long March 10. And I have fairly good numbers on the engines, but we're not entirely sure about the actual tankage, you know, how heavy the stages are and how much fuel they actually carry. We don't know the stage times, so I've made some best estimates based on the engines. There are going to be three cores like this, and each core has seven of the YF100K engines. These are kerosene oxygen engines, 1,396 kilonewtons in vacuum as far as I know, 337 seconds of ISP. They do throttle and my presumption has been that since all three of these cores are the same diameter that they would just make the center one uh, the same size instead of making it longer and have the center engine throttle down because they are capable of throttling to 65%. Uh, I've got a little bit of a graphical glitch there, I'll fix that later but otherwise things should work out. Uh, it could be that the core is just longer. Some models of the Long March 10 that I've seen have it longer, some don't. So, and basically every single model seems to be very slightly different. So they're keeping us guessing there. Um, but if I make it this way, I encounter a bit of a problem in that the stated mass of the Long March 10 is 2,187 tons to 2,189 tons. We're only at 2,052, but our thrust to weight ratio at launch is 1.3. I don't particularly think that they're going to make it any lower than that. So either they're going to end up having more powerful engines, and there's no indication that they're going to get more than this right now, or it's actually going to be lighter than stated. Now, if it is lighter than stated, then that's fine. Uh, I mean, or it could be as heavy as stated and they just have really, really low thrust weight ratio at the start. It's fine because we have right now on here the stated payload for the moon. So it's supposed to be able to send 27 tons to the moon. That's what we've got here, 27 tons, okay, 26.9, uh, plus these fairings from Long March 5. and. Well, it'll get it to the moon, I think. We'll fly it and test it out, but I think it'll get it to the moon. So it's workable. So we've got a total of 27 of the YF100Ks down there, and then the second stage, let me get the inner stage there, has two of the YF100Ms, so they're like more vacuum optimized versions of the ones downstairs, and a little bit more thrust, a little bit more specific impulse efficiency, but it's still a kerosene oxygen stage. And then we have three of the YF-75Es, upgraded longer nozzle versions of the upper stage engines from Long March 5. So these have the stats that, as far as I know, it would have. Um, but the burn time is all up for grabs. Uh, for Long March 5, these kinds of engines, or their relatives, uh, burn for 13 minutes. But the stage appears on Long March 10 to be really big. So, and they probably don't need to do too much to complete orbit. So the low thrust weight ratio is not a big deal. That's not a problem. So I'm thinking they're burning for longer. I don't know how much longer. If we take a look at the total Delta V, you need about 12,500 to get to the moon. And if it turns out that they burn for less time, they could burn for like that much. It could be just 13 minutes in the end and it'd still work out. The only thing is that if we make this lighter, it makes the rest of it lighter too. So um, yeah, I bet it could be that it's just burning for less and that'll still make everything work out just fine. So, but I'll just overburden it for now. And we'll see how much we have left. We should end up with 500 meters per second left at the end and that would verify that. All right, let's see if this thing can go to the moon or if it has some other issues that I don't know about. Taking it outside, launching from Wenchang. 
It's a bright sunny day here at Wenchang, and as you can see, the rocket is very tall and thin. The reason for this is because it is a 5 meter rocket. Presumably, that is because they wanted to make production easier, and Long March 5, which they were already producing, is 5 meters in diameter. This does mean that it gets to be longish, and by comparison, SLS, the core is 8.4 meters, and Saturn V, another famous moon rocket, is 10.1 uh, meters as far as its first stage is concerned. So those are both much bigger, and they do have more payload capacity to the moon than this does. Uh, Saturn V had 45 to 48 tons to the moon, and SLS with the EUS upper stage has 37 tons to the moon, while this has 27 tons. To make a moon mission work out then, they have to split the mission up on two different launches. They are going to have to send the lander separately, probably send the lander first, and then the crewed spacecraft will meet up with it. They'll transfer in after docking around the moon. So that is the plan as far as I understand it. Uh, I don't think there's any way you're going to get both the crew return vessel and the lander on a 27 ton capacity. So yeah, that's how it is. Uh, but let's see if it can get the 27 tons to the moon. SAS on, throttle up, ignition. And launch. Oh, it's loud. 21 engines. It's loud. Okay, uh, I'm gonna throttle down the core now. Z basically 0% on this would be 65% throttle. It doesn't go, like, to zero, really. It's just... The bottom end of it is as low as the engines can actually throttle, which is 65%. So the core will be throttled down and will preserve some extra fuel so it goes later than the boosters. Okay, booster set. Ooh, tight. Okay, and first stage set. Oh, it's took take out an engine. Ah. Uh... Gosh, I thought the Separatrons would help. Okay, well with one engine it's not going to have an easy time controlling itself. Well, while in here I'll mention one other sort of intention with the Long March 10, and that's to be able to land the first stage if it doesn't have the boosters, and it's only carrying the second stage. And in that case, they'll only have one engine on the second stage. I think maybe I'll just scooch these in a little bit more. So I put an extra gap in the center there. So they'll have one engine on the second stage, seven engines on the first stage, and have the first stage be recoverable, but who knows. We'll see about that. Okay, I don't know if that's going to help or not. Uh, just to make it even safer, maybe I'll just move these up a bit. Alright, hold on to your ears. All right, through max Q. Throttling down the core. Oh, the boosters themselves are overheating somehow. Huh. I think we can separate. All right, please be okay. All right, we've got two engines. probably all right to do fairings now. Those come off cleanly. I am thinking of cutting the upper stage down to the 13 minutes or close to it because we're gonna have more Delta V than we need here and maybe making the other two stages or plus boosters heavier even though that hurts the initial thrust weight ratio. I mean, they say 2,180 tons. I can increase it and hurt the thrust weight ratio. Okay, third stage. All right. So hydrolox engines here, hydrogen and oxygen. Very efficient. Good for transfers to the moon and everything. 
But the rest of the rocket is kerosene and oxygen for density. I mean, the thing is, the, the core of the Long March 5 is Hydrolox. The, the core of this is kerosene and oxygen for the density. But same diameter. Okay, it has reached orbit, 224 by 192. And as far as the lunar transfer is concerned, we've got 3,919 meters per second and requires about 3,130. So we've got plenty, which is why I say, I mean, we can dump some fuel here, make things heavier as necessary. But uh, anyway, just to demonstrate that, well, I'll just take an off plane transfer. But we don't know the dry masses of the stages. I've given it a good estimate. And again, the stage times, of course, is what I'm planning on tweaking. There are things we presumably know about the rocket and things we don't know. The engines are a fair bet as far as their stats are concerned. Well, that will be polarish if I don't know where they want to land. Uh, so this isn't a lander right now anyway. Alright, I mis missed the initial node because of an RCS faux pas. I hadn't enabled crossfeed on here and then I got perplexed briefly, but now the RCS is working and we are turning to the node. Alright, well, go for it. Okay, maybe a little bit of RCS will do the trick. Anyway, it is on its way to the moon. But unfortunately with the RCS it's going to take forever. But a moon encounter exists. And I am satisfied with that. I think I'll need to make a few tweaks probably as we learn more information about it. It is. It was originally due to launch in 2027, but that's been moved up. We don't know exactly what date, but actually seems to be on track for completion early, amazingly enough. Uh, but that's just the rocket. That's not the moon mission. The moon mission is also the spacecraft and the lander, and that's more complicated. So uh, I'll try to model that and see what we know about it, and we'll, we'll see how it all works out. Anyway, so that was Long March 10. I'll make improvements. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.